Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Winkler here. I wanted to talk a bit today about getting the AWS, the Amazon data, into the security model that runs the rest of your environment. We're doing things a little differently here than we've done in the past. So I'm going to spend the front end of the video talking about why we do things the way we do and the back end talking about how we do it. And there'll be some information in the links about how you can accomplish this in your own environment. Okay, let's get started. So I started with that the question of what does a complete picture mean in the modern era, right? So we have to look at the data center and this is something we've gotten pretty good with. Um, there's a few of my customers that have gotten completely free at the data center, but they are a rarity. Most folks keep critical data, often their crown jewels in the data center still, so we need to keep an eye on this. Um, but while saying that, often, all the new data is being generated in your cloud. This could be Salesforce, this could be AWS or Azure, IBM Cloud, could be a lot of things, right? To say that um, your users are using the data in both areas, your customers are using the data and creating the data in both areas, we need to see them in a single pane of glass to be able to tell what's going on, right? We can't silo these as there's a certain tendency to do. Okay. Um, traditional mobile devices and PCs, there is laptops everywhere, there's tablets, there's mobile phones. These often create and alter the data as well as send it out of our environment. Unless you have a fully functioning up and running CASB, and almost nobody does, um, we do need to keep an eye on these traditional devices that are generating and modifying our data. Um, this last category, right, smart devices and IoT, I could have broken into two, but this is really your machine-to-machine -machine data. This is the scan gun the delivery guy uses, or this could be um, a rubber mixer or a fractal distillation rig in a factory. These tell us how our business is operating. So if things are not working well in the business, right, if an oven is too hot when the wrong operator is in there, this could be something that could cost you a couple hundred thousand or a million dollars and this will show you if things are not operating correctly, right? So the machine to machine data is part of the same visibility that creates threats in your environment. Okay, so if we wanna take this and we wanna say, well, what does this mean? And I'm gonna say it says access to data, availability of data, and integrity of data. None of this is new ideas. We've been talking about this for 20 years, but these uh, access, availability, and integrity really are made up of those elements at this point in the game. Okay, cool. So if we need a single point of visibility, what does that visibility need to look about look like? So we have to start with threat intelligence, right? We know what's going on in the environment. That part's easy, right? That's what Sim's been doing for us for years. So if I say I need good threat intelligence, and this might be about something like um, an X-Force threat feed or the, the McAfee one or a Checkpoint's got a good one. There's a lot of good ones out there that will allow you to get as close to the threat curve of the bad actors as we possibly can. If I can tell you that a ransomware site is out there within minutes, that's great, right? So you can make good decisions based on that, send some rules to the firewall, however you want to work. Um, but there's also kind of the newer versions of it, the dark trace and the DNS analytics from IBM and all of this, so that sometimes I can get you inside the curve so that before the first malware goes out, I can tell you who's going to be bad sites in an hour, right? So threat intelligence is a major piece of this. Um, vulnerability data, the same way threat intelligence is new, vulnerability data is old and it is still super important. If your rubber mixer can't be patched because it'll break a cranky old app or you have the newest iOS vulnerability, I cannot tell you what you need to protect yourself from if I can't tell you where the holes are. This is still an absolute must have. Uh, real time visibility. Guys, if this is your first Q Radar video, I'm gonna ask you to go back and look at five others. Um, this is what we do. We let you know both the activity going on and what that activity means and how it threatens you. QRadar gives you full real-time visibility. It tells you what it is. We don't ask you to grep logs. And you would be amazed, or maybe you wouldn't, how often in a split environment with a little cloud, a little on-prem, a little this, a little that, people are taking disparate systems and putting them on a spreadsheet. In the couple hours, couple of days, it gets you to even put the data into the spreadsheet, let alone take a look at it. It's already too late. Okay. The last piece of this I want to talk about is incident response. IBM makes resilient, but there's five or six other products out there as well. So that if we can give you all of the data, we can pack it through the threat intelligence, the vulnerability data, give you visibility to it. If you don't have a plan on how to operate, the amount of time it takes you to solve a problem will stem into weeks, months, and in a few cases, even years like we saw ages ago. And we're not in an era where that's a viable solution anymore, right? So we need to know what we're doing once we've spotted a problem. Okay, 
Fair enough. Let's get to the specifics about AWS then. There is an awful lot of different kinds of data in AWS. Okay, but I decided to boil this down and say this comes down to AWS infrastructure and applications that live in AWS. As far as infrastructure, do I care if someone starts a session, what time they open it, if they're coming from a foreign country, if they're ending something or exporting data? Of course I do, right? As well as all of the data from the application that I've cared about for years. Um, and this comes down essentially to VPC flows and CloudWatch logs, right? Flows and logs start to sound familiar. This is largely made up from what's called CloudTrails data. CloudTrails data is the high quality information that your users want, right? So we are pulling the CloudTrails data out of all of these apps and from the infrastructure. We're giving you CloudWatch logs and VPC flows. Fair enough. Okay, here's the old way to do it first. We can get CloudTrails data via CloudWatch. Now what that means is I've got CloudWatch logs they live up in your uh, in your AWS, all well and good, and I can just send them down to QRadar via an API. It translates them into syslog, and it roughly costs you nine cents per gig. Okay, where this turns into some pretty big numbers, right? It can turn into a lot of money. We can take those same CloudWatch logs, get them into QRadar by proxy of an event collector, and make use of my compression. Okay, roughly 10 to 1. Uh, this is the old way to do it, but not a bad way. It's not the preferred way anymore. It does still work. If you have things requiring Linux or Windows agents, and sometimes you do, this is still the way we need to do it, right? Most of the time, we have a lot of native logging, and there's not a lot of need for agents anymore. But this is one of those rare cases you still want to operate in the old way, right? It does happen. This is the AWS protocol and the Guard Duty DSM, okay, to put it in all the Q radar speak. One of the big downfalls to this, aside from the cost, is it can have scaling issues. It was never meant to operate at the volume of data that we operate in 2019. It still works, but it's not the way that Amazon wants to do it or the way we think you should be doing it at this point. Okay, the new stuff. CloudTrails data via the S3 API, right? This is something that's been available for, oh, a bit over a month now at the time of this recording. And it's the kind of the going forward strategy here. Okay, so what that means is I've got VPC flows and CloudWatch logs. Now, VPC flows are the flows that live inside AWS that are flattened to events so that we can get that event data, but not the full data that we get from NetFlow, right? So using this method, we can take those VPC flows, we can reinflate them back to flows so we get the full data, right? Which is pretty cool. So this uses what's called the S3 API. This is the new way to do it. Um, there's an SQS queuing system, right? This is a bit back end, so don't worry about it if this doesn't mean anything to you. But using the S3 API and the SQS queuing, we get a couple of serious advantages over the prior method, okay? What that means, though, is I'm paying seven one hundredths, seven one thousandths of a penny per gigabyte data or one heck of a lot smaller amount Okay, by using this S3 API, I'm getting the fully inflated flows data, and I get this into QRadar um, where I get better quality data for what's costing you less money to do by using these new protocols, right? So this is the S3 protocol and the CloudTrails DSM inside QRadar. The big upside to this, beside the cost, is this is built to operate at scale. This is that same really valuable cloud law, crowd watch data that everybody wants, but running faster, running it for less money, and getting the VPC flows at full speed. Okay, uh, last thing I want to offer to you here before we close up is there is something that is called Kinesis Streams. This is expensive for the Amazon user, right? It just costs a bunch of money for them to, you'd have your license for this. All well and good, it is also the fastest way to get it. I do not have my support for this ready yet. My guys at development are cooking it right now. But Kinesis Streams, when this is ready, is gonna be one of these things where you are going to get your logs and your flows in QRadar through a single protocol as fast as they are produced, right? We're not quite there on this, it is coming. Okay, so let me summarize a bit here so you remember what we're talking about. So CloudWatch logs, this is the old way to do it, still works. AWS protocol, guard duty DSM, still works, still good. It is slower, it does cost you more money, okay? We get VPC flows, right? The flows inside Amazon reinflated back to actual flows and CloudWatch logs using the S3 API, right? 
and this is cheaper to use and get the added value. So this is generally considered the preferred way at this point. Um, and coming soon, what I don't have yet, but it is coming, is the Kinesis Streams that allows you to, even though it costs you the most money, it is your fastest response, and this is coming soon. I am Mike Winkler, and this has been our discussion on getting data out of AWS into your Q radar.